so on your virtual box you click on new because right now we are just trying to do a virtual environment but normally you are supposed to what is the name hmm? what is the name the virtual box the new the new you click on now the new here yeah. and the new brought out this that is we are trying to create I see your mouse or sorry please new okay, okay, okay. new then um since we are doing linux we are just going to choose the type of operating system it is linux then what version are we using probably ubuntu we'll there are many versions of linux so we'll just do the ubuntu 64 bits and then we'll call it a name whatever name we want to call it lab test whatever name then you do next then here you set your memory. The memory you want to allocate to your program. To to the to the operating system, the virtual operating system. So out of your personal memory, it will dedicate that memory to it. So I might probably just increase it to one gig here. Then I do next. Then I might probably want to create a virtual hard drive. Or use an existing one but i'll just create a virtual hard drive so i do create now it's asking me what type of virtual hard drive there are different uses of so um what i'll do is i'll choose the virtual box disk image because if you choose um virtual hard disk vhd you might you might transfer that hard drive to a live a live <coughs> live computer so but whichever way and it works perfectly on a live computer so i'm just going to do next you can either dynamically allocate or you do a fixed allocation fixed allocation is that um, it allocates the hard drive immediately and it takes all that space from your computer itself but if you do dynamically allocate as the operating system is taking up space it's also taking that space gradually gradually so if for example we want to do we want to use we've allocated the other time i think we chose eight gig for the hard drive space so if we do fix it's going to take up that eight gig away from my operating system mm. from the normal one but if i do dynamically allocate if the os is going to take two gig it should just take that two gig away yeah. but it's as we still it will okay. remain yes so as more things have been added that space will be to be expanded there's disadvantage and disadvantage to to each one of them to the fixed one the disadvantage is that it takes up that address space even if you have not used it on the virtual machine but dynamically allocate the only disadvantage is that it's creating that address space as as it's been taken up and it might be a little bit slow because it's taking or it's doing the two it's processing in the up the virtual environment and it's also taking up the hard drive space from you but if you are using a solid state drive it's just probably you might probably not notice so i'll just dynamically allocate so i'm going to set my hard drive space here and out of whatever size you have you can give it i'm giving it eight eight gig and i'll do create so it has created the lab test so to to finish up you might want to do some other settings mm -hmm. so you click on the lab test settings here is where you set different things like if you come to advance is where you set probably should show a full screen and some other things drag and drop maybe you want to copy and paste using drag and drop from your own operating system to the virtual operating system then description whatever thing you want to write then the system configuration itself what and what should be should be showing if you want floppy so i'm going to uncheck floppy cd drive hard drive or network whichever one this is the boot order like where you are putting for it yeah then um, processor how many processors do you have how many do you want to allocate right now i have four processors I can I'm dedicating just one of my processor to it. Probably because I might be running three or four virtual machines and I'm going to dedicate probably one one processor to them each. 
So and then um, what how much can they take up space on the processor? Um certain two hundred percent. So you can use then other things like acceleration and all of that. Display video RAM, I have one twenty eight MB, depending on what you want to do. Storage, this is where it's very very important. <coughs> This is the hard drive we created that 8 gig. You can see it here, it's saying virtual size 8 gig, actual size 2 MB. So it has taken 2 MB off my uh, of my hard drive. So and then I can decide to make it a solid state drive that is emulate SSD kind of thing. So then um, because my hard drive is solid state, so that's why giving me the option. Then this MT. That's where I will now put in my CD, that is my um, um, my operating system, the Linux operating system. So I'll select this, this side it, and I'll tell it to choose my Ubuntu 13. Oh, I, yeah. Then here, that's because I've used it before. That's why it's showing here. But I can decide to click on choose virtual hard drive and select where you have downloaded your Linux to. So I'm just going to choose my this and I'm telling it's a live CD. Yeah. Then when I'm done, I can click on OK or probably check through other settings like network. Here I can have as many adapters as possible. So depending on the project you want to do. And then all of that. So I'll just do OK and I'll do start. So we'll just wait for some while for it to for it to start up okay so here i'm going to do that so it's probably starting up here now so here we have it So it's loading up now. So he's asking us, do I want to try? Try before you install. Like try it without installing it and you see how it works or you just probably click on install install. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you already want to use it. So you might just uh, probably click on install Ubuntu now. So our language is English, then I click on continue. So and then I'm telling it to probably erase disk and install Ubuntu or um, probably do something else. So um, at this part I'm going to click on something else because for example for example I might have probably I want to do I want to install two operating systems together on the same hard drive. So that's why I'm going to probably choose um, something else. So if I'm installing probably Windows and and any other thing together, probably on your computer, you want to have Windows and you want to have Linux. So here, when you get to this part, you choose something else. That's if you are not installing on a virtual machine. But if I install on a virtual machine, you can erase this and install. and install Ubuntu. But if you are probably partitioning, you, are, you want to use the two OS at the same time, you can click on something else and click on continue. And then you have to start doing some settings in here. But I'm just going to go back, erase this and install. So I'll do the install now. Um, here yeah, just probably ask us for all the things all the things you need just put in the information the country you are selecting um, where you reside actually so I'll probably just select I know it Lagos somewhere around here in Africa so, uh, so it has Lagos and I do continue then then um, I probably want to ask you for your keyboard layout. Just do detect keyboard layout. 
Then press one of the following keys. Um, y. So, no, 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 no. So, you might want to go through all the stress or not. So, and then once you're done, continue your, your name. The name of the account. And um, here, your computer name. This is what we will see on the network. So you might, your account name might probably be different from your computer name, but you can still do it as the same. So then, password. You have to put a password. It won't allow you. Linux is not as dumb as Windows that you can do stuff. So I'm just going to put password as this. So once you're done, you can continue, and then you probably just wait for it to finish up all the installation. Yeah. So at this instance, I have to close the installation, like close the virtual box, power off the machine, and I click OK. Then I'll have to go back to settings to remove under storage to remove this live CD. I'll have to remove it. So I probably just click on this minus, remove it, so it removes so that it doesn't boot from that again. Yes. So I do OK, and when I'm done, I can do start. So we'll just wait a while for it to kick off. So it's asking for a password. I got a password wrong. So, yep, we've already got our installation. Mm -hmm.